the five theaters right in the 1970s. Yeah. Toronto Workshop Productions, mm -hmm. Factory, yep. Tarragon, mm -hmm. Theatre Pass Marais, and Toronto Free. And Toronto Free Theatre. Yeah. Which basically Which had was a break off from Pass Marais uh, because Martin Kinch and John Palmer had been working at Pass Marais and then this opportunity for another right. space and a different source of funding came in for them. Now, Tarragon, let's characterize, shall we? Okay, sure. What should we call Tarragon the intellectual, Bill Glasgow? Mm, yes, I would say. And also, um, I wouldn't say that Bill's strength was um, in being first on anything. I mean, he needed, I think one of the bravest things uh, was when Ken Gass said, we will produce Canadian plays written by Canadian playwrights. We will not start a debate about how worthy they are. This is Ken Gass Ken at Gass Factory. Ken Gass at Factory. Right. Still and at so Factory. He, and he started. Uh, he started and uh, he took that. We had, I guess without you know, making a declaration, but basically by the time I started running the theater, um, we had realized that the, the strength of Passmorai was in doing original work. Didn't, if there was an original writer, that was fine, but if not, the exploration would be a reflection of an audience we were hoping to find or that we needed to find, or heaven knows what, or just a reflection of things that we had a need within ourselves, because there, there's always been the two threads, the populist and the experimental thread in past my since I was here. And Toronto Workshop Productions. Toronto George Workshop Luskin. Productions, which is, oh, the most courageous move was for, you know. Um, he was first, right? Oh, way first. 54. We're, we're talking, yeah, in the 50s, yeah. coming into Toronto, the Toronto landscape in the 50s, and trying to do the what became alternative theater. But George did collectives as well, did he, he not? Did, he did, um, <coughs> I don't think he ever called them collectives. He, his model was Joan Littlewood, which was, I think they used words like ensemble. And uh, it was very much um, oriented from a very strong dominant leadership on the, you know, Joan Littlewood was not a very shy, retiring woman. She had, you know, I met her. Neither are you. But, well, yeah, I am. I'm very shy. Uh, mm -hmm. she, uh, she, they said, had the vocabulary of a longshoreman and used it beratingly all the time. And she was just outrageous, corrosive, and driven. And George Luscombe, and you Luscombe think, took his And Luscombe trained with her, right. worked with her, came back and brought that um, perspective of theater you, with a social conscience and a left-wing background into the desert of Toronto for those uh, kinds of circumstances. Now there had been, you know, n there's never a complete desert. There had been the theater in the 30s with working class um, communities wanting that theater and performing that theater. But there was, no, there was no kind of continuity in that and I, you know, George, just came with a missionary zeal and energy that was stunning. I saw on Fraser Avenue, which was at that point in the, in, you know, the darkest part of the universe, to go in midwinter to Fraser Avenue. And when, when I must have been in about 1965. It was in the I was basement, at the University right? of Toronto in 1965, and it was in the basement of some factory in the middle of nowhere on Fraser Avenue. And he was doing extraordinary stuff. I had seen him uh, doing a summer season at Stratford before that. So he would, that was not the first time. They he had done the summer season at Stratford? In, yeah, outside. And oh, they I would see. Take, uh, they did outdoor theater down by the railroad tracks. Um, and George was always, I hate the phrase, left wing. Oh, very left wing, yeah. And he would consider himself a social democrat, I would think. Right. And, you know, and a founding member of... The, you know, the left-wing thinking in this country. And did you and he ever collaborate? I tried to join him. I, I thought he was the most exciting thing around, and he says, well, you have to be an actor. And I said, well, I know I'm not an actor. He says, no, you have to be an actor. So, yes, George, you know. I Meaning I don't really want another director, I don't want a dramaturge, <laughs> I don't, I don't want what, a, an you assistant. Know, so I said, okay, I, all right, George, I will audition for you. So I actually went and memorized some lines. I, I did Hotspur. And I did Sergeant Musgrave's dance, so I, you know, showing that I knew what to choose and all the rest of it. But at the same time, I had 
got a, um, a letter of acceptance as an assistant director to Jean Gascon. And I went So you in. went to Stratford? You didn't no, go no, to no. TWP? Well, no, 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 no. I the threw rule it breaker? George. No, I threw it to George. I, I did my audition, and I said, George, there's my audition. We now know that I'm not an actor. I still have a lot to learn from you. I, I, you know, I have this chance at Stratford, and I have, um, I hope, a chance with you. And my choice would be to go with you. He says, no, you've got to be an actor. <laughs> That's pure George. <laughs> yeah. That's pure no, George. No, complete stubborn, uh, no capacity for any kind of evolutionary involvement. And that's why Jim Gerard was so brilliant, because by inviting people like Martin Kinch and John Palmer into the mix of Passmerai, he made it not about him and his vision, but about an ensemble or a collective uh, experience that could take advantage of all of the kinds of talents right. that were going around at that point. And actually, if you look from that point f forward, the most interesting moments in the theater that I can think of are when that configuration happens again. I think of a parallel, which was um, Buddies at the George Street space. Buddies in um, Bad Time, buddies which was TWP time, yeah, folded yeah. and well, Buddies took yeah, over. Yeah, well, they don't even have TWP by that point. Buddies in Bad Times are you know, a gay spin-off company uh, who has their own space on George Street. And they have Daniel McIver, Ken McDougall, um, oh, who's that other guy? Oh, I'm sorry. Sky Gilbert, that's not the other guy I'm looking for. And at least one other director. And they're all really potentially exciting directors. And they go around sort of challenging each other with the next play they, they're allowed to put on or can find the money to put on at Buddies. And that's it a huge, exciting environment which stimulates a whole bunch of really, really interesting talent. And go back to the original five. Yeah. Toronto okay. Free Theatre is the Toronto fifth. Free Theatre, we were in Kinch, there. John and that would, you could say that was an environment that, we, you know, apart from George who never went to see anybody's play, except he did see um, uh, Charles Manson, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. I, uh, June Faulkner, I think, physically picked him up and brought him in to see that play. George? Luscombe never saw The Farm Show? I don't think so. Never no. saw 1837? I don't think so, no. Takes all kinds to make a family, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, no, I, 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 I used to go to his theater all the time. <coughs> Mona would say, oh, in fact, one time, here's a good, a good Luscombe Mona, story. Mona's George's, Mona's George's wife. wife. But George's daughter was doing box office. And by that time, see, actually, when I came into it, I was a beard-wearing guy in town. Nobody else was wearing a beard in, in the theater. Glasgow, maybe, but I don't think so. I think Glasgow's beard even came a little bit later. <laughs> but uh, Luscombe's beard definitely did. And um, by, the, you know, by, say, the mid-'70s, he had a beard as well. And we're about the same height. And I was prematurely old. Uh, so I went to get a ticket for a play at um, TWP. And his daughter said, Dad, you don't need a buy. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not. She mistook me for her dad when I was getting a ticket at TWP. Martin Kinch at the Toronto Free Theatre. How yeah. would you char characterize that? Oh, uh, exciting, charismatic uh, force. Without him, Passmarai would not have continued to live. He did the, the essential play. It, we needed to have a popular breakthrough. Right. Uh, or we were not going to survive with the bounce check checks and all the rest of the things that were going on at that time. And he came up with this brilliant idea of taking John Lennon's uh, early writings, which you know, he'd heard about in Britain. Martin was really smart because he read all the, the stuff that was going on in, in right. London and in New York. So he was hot off the press of the most exciting ideas that were working there. And uh, he still had to make the production his own and did a very good job. Here but at he Passmerai, though. It was at Passmerai right. in Trinity Square. And he was also very astute, he, he paired it up with a, a sex show, a Terrence McNally show where basically, uh, <laughs> politically it wouldn't wash today, but a, an obsessed young man has captured this woman, tied her up to a chair in his apartment, and while telling her his life story, he's and loosening up a free arm every once in a while and then tying it back up, he undresses her. So by the end of the show, she's naked, 
and he has, you know, he's naked because he's told his story. Uh, somehow he unties her at the end, and instead of leaving, she embraces him, and that's the end of the show. <laughs> but it was a hot show, and the trench coats came for it and, and, <laughs> and, and justified it by, uh, by the, the smart and clever uh, with it John Lennon play that had done with a really good actor. Uh, Define for us. Booth Savage was in the smart. Uh, who are the trench coats? Who are the trench coats? Are, <laughs> trench coats are dirty old men who, in, and this is before Toronto discovered sex in 1974, we're talking about 1970, 69. We're talking 1969 at this point. And it was a big hit. Filled the place, got people excited. We actually even toured a bit to York University and Brock. Right. And uh, got a little taste for audiences outside the, the Toronto Triangle, if you like. 